In this podcast, we will discuss about, the US dollar will die, and it will fall from its position as the world's reserve currency sooner than expected, says Jim Rogers, best-selling author of, Hot Commodities. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Rogers tells our Daniela Cambone that Ukraine being inducted into NATO is the underlying cause of Russia's actions. Now we're paying a gigantic price, for the actions taken by US elected officials, he says, and when the war is over, Russian stocks will be an undervalued opportunity. Other sovereign nations are frantically, coming up with something to compete with the US dollar, due to economic sanctions being ramped up in recent years, Rogers asserts. I cannot see the world having 100% computer money, he concludes, saying governments will use it to control the masses. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on for the dollar currency, what's going on in the global right now and will the US dollar collapse. Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. I want to bring up a recent quote of yours, Jim, um, that, that struck me. You know, I just mentioned the U.S. is expected to announce more sanctions on Russia. But you say what is happening with the U.S. dollar is the end of the U.S. dollar because an international currency is supposed to be neutral. But in Washington, they are now changing the rules. Now, if in Washington does not like you, they put sanctions on you and you cannot use U.S. dollars. Yes, it's outrageous. Everybody knows what the world's international currency is supposed to be. Anybody can use it for anything. But now Washington in the last few years has started putting sanctions on people. Daniela, it is ruining America, ruining parts of America, because now everybody is frantically looking for something to compete with the dollar. The Chinese, the Russians, the Indians, the Brazilians, the the Iranians are all working as fast as they can to come up with something to compete with the U.S. dollar for political reasons also economic reasons. I mean, America is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, but we're shooting ourselves in the foot every day. This means that now, you know, soon, sooner than it would have been, the U.S. dollar will no longer be the world's medium of exchange in the international currency. That's not good for the U.S. It certainly was not good for Britain, which used to be the world's international currency. When they lost that status, well, they lost a lot of things. It makes me think of a recent quote I, I read from Charlie Munger, who said he, he he's working with the thesis that in 100 years time, there will be no U.S. dollar. Well, no currency has lasted forever. No currency, no number one currency has ever lasted forever. If you go back and look at history, we've had international currencies or the world's medium of exchange. Maybe they lasted 80 years, 100 years, 150 years max. They've all changed. It's changed over and over and over ever since the beginning of time. The U.S. has been on top for a while, but now, as I said, we are the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. And now we will not let the U.S. dollar stay neutral. Now we're using it as a political or or an instrument of war. So that means nobody in his right mind who thinks they might across the U.S. someday is going to want to use U.S. dollars. No, I don't think I'm ever going to cross the U.S. dollar, the U.S., the State Department, but I worry. Now i got to figure out something else, some other place to keep my money. Jim, do you think whatever comes next and replaces it will be in the form of a digital dollar in whatever currency? Well, there's no question that everybody, all money is going to be on the on the computer soon. In China, you can't even take a tax with money. There, you can't take a tax with their money. You can't buy an ice cream with money. You have to have your money on the on the computer. Every country is working on it, including the U.S., Washington D.C. So soon, all money is going to be on the computer. But I am sure, Daniela, when the money's here and Washington says, "Okay, this is money now." I don't think that the bureaucrats in Washington would say, okay, but if you want to use somebody else's money, you want to use those things over there, you can. Bureaucrats don't like to lose control. They don't like to lose power. They don't like to lose monopoly. Um, Looking at oil prices, they're nearing 100% gain year over year, uh, and gasoline prices in the U.S. reached over $4 and the highest level uh, since 08. So... I was reading that in recent cycles, when oil gained 100 percent in a in a one year period, including 08, a recession occurred. The fears of a recession concern you? Of course, it's been 
12 years since we had the last recession in the US. That's the longest in, in American history. So we're overdue just on a time basis. I mean, it could last 20 years. Who says it has to, couldn't go on forever, but it never has. So I am sure because of inflation higher, which will drive interest rates higher, we're going to have a recession in the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm just telling them that's the way it's always worked through, since the beginning of time. So yes, we're going to have a recession probably fairly soon. You, you know, you should watch Reed Stansberry. They'll tell you when the recession is coming. They're smarter than I am. And when the, when the recession comes, a lot of us are going to get hurt. I hope I survive. I hope we all survive. But some people are going to get hurt. I believe you recently said, Jim, that, you know, once the war is over, the, the stock market could see another hurrah, but then there'd be a downturn events. Well, that's my view. Uh, I'm not good at market time. But my view is something is going to cause this thing in Ukraine to calm down fairly soon. It's not doing Putin any good. It's not doing anybody any good. So who knows what, if he can find a way to save face, things will stop. That will lead to a big rally, especially since central banks are not so aggressive right now. We'll have the, let the big rally be the last rally. I hope it, that if it works that way, that I'm smart enough to sell that la that last rally. That big, it'll probably be a big rally, because then people say, gosh, nothing can win the stock market now. And then it'll be the end. Well, let's look at commodities, Jim. Obviously, uh, you're probably the greatest commodities expert on the planet. Uh, you know, everything from wheat to nickel, gold, as we're speaking right now, over $2,000 an ounce everything soaring in the commodity space. How long does this go on for? Well, probably for a while now. Commodities have been had a decade or so where they were in the tank for many reasons, while people were putting their money into bonds and stocks and, and property in some, in some countries. Um, I would, so I would suspect since supply and demand have gotten out of whack in most commodities that the commodity bull market will last a long time. They're printing a lot of money. They're going to continue to print money. Money printing has always led to inflation. And if you own the things that go up in price, you do well. Plus there are fundamental changes taking place in the world. Electric cars use four times or several times as much copper and lead as regular cars. So the demand for a lot of stuff is going to be going up and nobody has been opening lead mines or copper mines in a long time, Daniela. So we're going to see higher prices. You know, looking at gold, uh, I said we're over 2000 an ounce. A lot of investors saying that's great. But, you know, why in this context, context wouldn't gold be at 3000, 3500, 4000? A lot of investors frustrated with gold um, since shouldn't it be, you know, the safe haven bid right now of choice? Well, I own gold. I mean, I've got, you know, got a little gold right here, right here on the table. Got a little silver right here on the table. I'm an old peasant and us old peasants know we better have some gold and silver when things go wrong. I'm not buying at the moment because you just pointed out it's going through the roof. Uh, if I were buying anything, I would buy silver now because it's cheaper. I'm not buying either right now, but when they go down again, I hope I'm smart enough to buy more gold and more silver. Yes, they have lagged what many people would think, but Daniela, gold is at an all-time high, it's certainly in euros and most international currencies. So it's not as though gold has been sitting in the corner doing nothing. And I, I will buy more of both when they calm down. But, well, do you think that the Europeans will keep buying uh, oil and, and, and uh, counting on Russia for energy, or will this cause a change? Well, they got to buy their oil somewhere. You have some, you got some spare oil, you can sell them. Uh, you know, the problem is there's only so much oil in the world and Europe will buy wherever it can get it. But somebody's got, I mean, if Europe buys its oil from Libya, well, that's okay. But then the Russians are going to sell oil to other people who were buying it from Libya before. Oil is an international market. And somebody, we all need oil, we all need energy. So somebody's going to buy it somewhere. The Russians have already started cutting the prices and that's attractive to some people.